two. I'm smiling because I'm looking at Jake and Spencer's Let's go. face on my screen. We are excited to be back for episode two. Learned a little from episode one, so hopefully you're still with us. Uh, this is uh, Miduele Cycling in Salt Lake City, a uh, cycle team created in 1984. We've got this fun little podcast. And uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about kits, all things kits and, uh, di- and diapers that this cycle team wears. We're excited. It's one of our uh, it's one of our passions, I guess you could say, is uh, is what we wear, how we look, and spandex. Uh, the spandex. Our spandex partner. This episode is dedicated to our spandex partner, Volley, not Voler. Volley. Get it right. V O L E R. Uh, we love Brian Trapp and the whole team over there at Volley. So, a uh, huge shout out to them. They've actually been a partner from the beginning. The only spandex that this team has ever worn is volet so uh shout out to them a couple other quick announcements before we get started um morton Pedersen, uh, a team member of ours uh got uh in a serious accident five or six weeks ago and there's a gofundme page for him there's a link in the profile show notes of this uh to donate um they're looking for about forty thousand dollars to help morton and his family and they're close so if this team and cycle community could step up, that'd be awesome. We also had a close neighbor, Todd Wall, who recently passed away from injuries sustained in cycling, and his GoFundMe page will also be available. Um, his family and his widowed wife would be very appreciative. So uh, team store is open. You got to uh, tell December 7th, 2020 to buy your mandex get that, that <laughs> order of mandex in and uh it's we got all new kits designed for 2021 which is what we're going to talk about today uh super exciting there but uh beyond that uh any any other what else, what else am i missing was zwifting right now uh oh. we got kicker order kicker orders coming we got spring camp coming in march and we got all these teams that are like invite us invite us and i'm like uh <laughs> Okay, it's a hundred dollars. I don't know what to say to them. Everybody wants a piece of team yeah. camp, so and that's fine. We got the Thanksgiving. Um, oh, right. oh, good point. Good so point. Chip. If uh, for any of you that have not joined a Thanksgiving turkey ride for many years, we have met at Hogel Zoo, um, seven thirty a.m. Uh, we'll be safe and socially distanced. We put hot chocolate inside your bottles. We have donuts at the end. And no matter the terrain, be it snow, dirt, uh, it is just a good time. So hope to see you there. If the weather is outrageous, we will turn to a fun turkey Zwift ride. Mm. I hope it's outside. Can we just take a second to talk about how deathly yesterday was on Zwift. I know oh, Stu, you were there. That, Chip was, no, Chip's been recovering, awful. but man, it was just absolutely well, awful. So we did a meetup race up the new route up Vontu in France. I, I just, the Alp to me is so fun. The Zwift, like with the switchbacks and the timer. Well, and the and map, the, thing, the map that And the map. That. Vontu was like, I might as well just be dipping my you know what in a right. car sunroof and having it slam shut repeatedly it was terrible wow. i, yeah. I, I mean, could 13.2 so... miles and 5000 feet of vert uh, I mean, it has, was... it's just straight climbing and i thought it was just boring just oh, <laughs> oh. maybe it just wasn't my well, day though i don't know some guys loved it well um i'm going to get i'm going to move us into um uh topic 1 yellow jersey so um, last year we came up with this idea and I'll, I'll kind of be brief, but there's a lot of guys and gals. I don't want to be discriminative. There is a very strong contingent of women who ride with me dwelly, but on the team roster, which I hold there, we have just surpassed 200 active team riders who associate themselves with the team, and that means people who pay team fees, wear kits. I've been heard. I, I've heard that it's been said that seventy-three point four percent of all riders in Utah are wearing me. Do I like? Just kidding. That statistics made up. But Stu, how many were those since Lodija? So yeah, we have we have added almost twenty new riders. 
And uh, the Incredible. process, the process is not like, a, although we don't discriminate, um, come one, come all is a really hard thing for a cycle team. Um, most of the riders who join us have a rider friend who invite them to belong. They join for a team ride. They want to be part of the group. It's, it's pretty rare that we just get a random outsider who's just like, hey, you guys look pretty dumb like von two on a two von i want to write i want to do that so it's 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 kind of an inner circle not exclusive but there are some leaders in the group and i'm talking dudes that are founders of the team uh examples leaders mentors those who embody everything that we hope to establish with the squad so um, they each kind of do it in their own way. They're not like all the exact same guy. Some are old, some are young, uh, some were original founders of the team. So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting mix, but the idea is, is you, you put a yellow Jersey on the guys that we want to draw attention to, uh, for the team to look to, um, I guess a way to, to diversify or, or show, uh, new writers or other writers hey, this, this is the type of writer or person that uh, you should follow on the team. So was that good? Is that a good explanation of what's happening there? Yeah, I would say so, Stu. I would say, um, I, I, and I think we just need to hold it up while we talk a little bit about it. For anyone that has not seen these, they, they are so awesome. Um, this is this year's, and what's so cool about it is that they change from, um, from year to year with the style and with the, with the new look and feel. Um, but Stu, I would say, um, like we mentioned in la the last podcast, a yellow jersey um, is significant of a history of something that someone has accomplished or overcome or contributed. Mm -hmm. Those are three attributes that come to mind when I think about the ye yellow jersey and what it represents. And uh, one, one thing I missed is, is that, the, in my opinion, the coolest part about this is that it is a team-nominated honor. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a nomination form that has some questions and uh, ideas on why this person would be nominated. And then uh, it, it's not like we're throwing darts or, or, or picking right. people. Uh, I think that's why it's so awesome is uh, team nominated and the nominations come in we re we review them we look at them and then we have this really fun well i think it's fun kind of a presentation that we do uh where we honor the person with a, sh a short script presentation of the jersey chip actually zips the jersey on for them <laughs> just kidding he doesn't do that but that would be <laughs> we should add we should add that we should add that we, we should, should we, could, and, and we could clothe them in the yellow jersey Yes. And, and for those not seeing this video, Chip is wearing a yellow vest right now. I don't know whether it's black label or actually the, uh, it's, you know, the <laughs> yellow is, jersey vest, dude, but he I is, he is wearing a yellow vest. <laughs> you know, it just happened to match with my work outfit today. And knowing what the theme was, I just thought I'd go with it. So uh, last year we picked, um, there were eight recipients uh, that we honored throughout the year. And I think we're going to kind of keep with that theme, maybe five to six a year, uh, coming from all genres, young and old, male, female, depending on the nominations that come in. Um, so uh, they're, they're on the Crown, uh, Crown Council. They're on the Miduele website now with each of their little bios. Uh, let me read the names. So Gino Smith, Ed Chawner, Ken Jones, John Olson, Chris Peterson, Dave Sharp, Eric Olson, Jake Cook. And we'll hopefully add to that group as nominations continue to come in. But uh, real, really a fun, I think it's fun. I hope everybody think it's, thinks it's fun to, uh, to have this as part of the squad. So I've talked enough. Jake, thoughts yeah. on Yellow Jersey? No, it's, it's, and the cool thing is it's, it's team nominated. I mean, it's not like us as Yellow Jersey members get together and we coordinate and, oh, it should be this person or we think, you know, this person is really deserving of it. It's all based off our own individual team members submitting these applications in a sense, or these, um, you know, papers to, to um, nominate their, their person. So 
Um, it's not like, again, we get together, it's all backed by the team. And so it's something really special. And just to emphasize, I think what's iconic about it is, is just kind of like the Tour de France jersey is the leader jerseys in yellow. We kind of embodied that, um, that same style with doing this yellow jersey as being leadership, teamwork, courage, strength, and someone who pushes you, pulls you, and is willing to suffer. I mean, all those qualities are what embodies or embraces this yellow jersey. Yeah. One thing that makes me really excited is uh, the spring uh, camp is normally where we start out the year with the, the next year of yellow jerseys. And it looks to be taking place in Jim Hutton's kitchen um, over, over spring camp. And that is number one, um, gracious of Jim. And number two, a really cool setting to present. It was. Oh. Um, that, that kind of rolls us in, in the last episode, we, we talked about Chip, Chip kind of showed and mentioned the movement of what we wear. Um, and it, it really has been a big change. Some of the guys have got, we should do a fashion show one time of dudes in old kits because they, oh boy, Chip's got some goodies, but I mean, like the, old, the old kits used to say like, ninth and ninth on the back and uh like like spence mentioned in the last episode uh very thematic with blue and yellow and so um about six years ago the team made a change to black yellow red and white uh as the main colors and that theme has kind of stuck and if you're listening to this and you're a team member you could know that a team change in kits comes about every four to five years where we actually redo the whole design of the of the kits themselves which is uh, good and bad uh which is what we're going to get into here <laughs> sometimes um the mixing and matching of the of the kits and we're going to go through some standards of what we, we believe everyone should be wearing um standards are a thing that you can definitely break you know do your own thing be be original I'll, I'll shun you and make fun of you but uh uh we're gonna provide some tips but but what else chip you you've worn quite a few mm -hmm. kits yourself um tell us about maybe history and and um how, how it all works. Yeah, the, f since 1984, you guys need to know that even this, um, the cursive uh, logo of Midwelli was the exact same uh, logo until um, about also uh, five years ago. And five years ago, we went to the block lettering and Stu um, uh, worked with a business on, on redesigning just the new look and feel, as I would call it, as um, kind of brand awareness of Midwelli went into a block lettering. So um, as you go through the years, you can kind of see like that team member has been with us for a long time <laughs> because if if he or she is wearing... Um, so Flame, if they're wearing flames on their bibs. Yeah, if they have on a cursive um, jersey top, but then have on the uh, block letter uh, mm, bibs, mm -hmm. then it, it's kind of like, now, does that go uh, yes or no? Well, we're here to tell you that we um, are just going to provide some, some, some <laughs> recommendations on trying to keep the kits, well, for the most <laughs> part, uh, looking good together. And I think Stu's I mean, laughing because I... I I have a hard time with it. Uh, actually, no, no. Not, not, not that I have a hard time wearing the right thing, that I have a hard time seeing the wrong thing. I mean, no, I pride myself on knowing everyone on the team. Like, I really do. And so, so I play this game. We're riding up Emmy, and I'm like, oh, here comes Andy Olson. Watch this. This is Andy Olson. Boom. And, it's, and I'm like, I know. Okay, so sometimes you see a guy, and he's wearing, like, blue bottoms with orange flames, and he's got a nut, and I'm like, I, no clue. That guy's been wearing that kit for, what, 12 years, 10 years? And I'm like, you got to ditch those bibs, dude. That's like, that's like icky. 
You got to get rid of them. We got the the, pa- gotta... the padding's got to be gone, man. I mean, oh. I just don't know how you sit and I, I don't know. Now, what I, must go, I think I think I go through like two or three bibs a year at least. Oh, right? at least. I mean, yeah. The this amount of miles is, we put in, but here's what's fun. This is a shout out to to all of you that have old kits. Um, old kits stay together with old kits. I mean, the point that I would make best served would be an old pair of bibs. They match with an old top, but the old pair tell of Tell us how you feel, Chip. Just tell us how you feel. Just be honest. <laughs> they don't match with the new top. So there are days and even shout outs to when we'd go retro for a, a ride. And right. when you show up in the blue kit, it's money. But the blue kit does not match with the new black kit. No, no. Oh, and you got to you, you gotta go find those blue socks. You, but yes, even the, the outerwear. Socks. I mean, you, you can't mix the outerwear. I mean, you can't mm-hmm. wear like an old mm-hmm. kit with... Mm-mm. The new outerwear, a new vest, right? I mean, and 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 this is a problem we created on our own. And I, I actually believe that it all started uh, two years ago. We we created a thirty-five year anniversary kit known as it's known as Blackout. Okay, this is a kit that is blackout, and it should be exclusively worn with itself. It was never intended to be mixed and matched with other items whether blue or red or yellow or white blackout is blackout end of story uh, argue with me go ahead tell me tell me i'm wrong perfect no i mean that's <laughs> that's perfect i mean that's why we put like the little hint of pinstripes on there right i mean to have the yeah. match and match so yes the little so, details so we went into that i did i did get uh, some negative feedback from mike hand scene at hangar 15 he said I would really love to ride with you guys, but I can never, I can never figure out what I'm supposed to be wearing. There's so much to be worn. <laughs> but let's let's just talk about real quick uh, basic standards for how you look when you ride on the team. But it, it'll be very simple. But Chip kind of already started. If you're gonna wear the blue, that's great. Match, match the blue. Yeah. If you're gonna wear, um, in, in, this is my opinion. You can argue with me. But if you're going to wear a, a white top, you know, you wear white bottoms or a black, or black bottom or a black one. But you, you cannot mix a white top with red bottoms or blackout bottoms or blue bottoms. I mean, that am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, I think you're right. I mean, and, and I think, too, even I think this last year and, and Chip and Stu, you would agree with me is, you know, when we do send out team invites, things like that, we try to kit coordinate a little bit so like if our pitchers taken or just as a team we look you know we look matchy matchy so um, here's here's one way to uh, help everyone and i live by this and swear by it oh boy, oh boy. when i do here we go my, here we go when i do my kit laundry i do it by itself it doesn't go with my jeans and everything <laughs> else right i do my cycling laundry on, once a week delicates good okay. okay do you use tide do you use now, tide chip <laughs> uh no Here's what he I actually do. He, he washes it in a profile shake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, hey, we need to talk about that for Black Friday. Okay. Side note. Okay. When I wash my kit, kits, and I've got maybe eight of them now on my bed, if you take out your hangers from your closet and you just match what you bought together as a match based on the bottoms, the bibs, and the jersey top. They are all hung up, ready to go. So there is no questioning. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. never will look like you got dressed in the dark. In a grab bag, you mean? Yeah. Like you're just pulling stuff out If of you a bag. pull that out of your grab bag before you go out at 5.30 in the morning, you can't see it. You're going to be wearing a blackout top with some red bottoms with a cursive Midwelly arm sleeve. And it's going to be book. like... And, and this is coming from a guy who basically packs everything in his back pocket on, on a summer day. He has a mm-hmm. thermal jacket mm-hmm. in the back of his mm-hmm. jersey. Mm-hmm. Right. So I do believe, though, I mean, as a standard, like I don't even mix cursive with block. I, I do think that sometimes you, you could do it if you're in a pinch, but I'm not going to put on cursive arm sleeves with a block jersey. Not going to happen. Not going right. to. Ha- it's just not going to happen. I and, and we're kind of reaching the point where all the cursive stuff. It's it's uh, it's it's going away. Like we've gone away from it now. This is its third year. Um, now, this is essential talk. 
you have all new design kits in 2021. So we're going to have some mixing and matching going on. What is, a, in your opinion, what's appropriate here? Can I wear 2020 bibs with 2020 jerseys or 2021 jerseys? Can I mix 2021 bibs with 2020 jerseys? I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, outerwear, so outerwear, um, you take a 2021 kit, uh, the colors, which is key, colors are still going to match with the outerwear of a 2020 vest or a 2020 uh, coat. Also, from a pocketbook standpoint in cost, you're like, okay, I bought four kits. I did not buy a thermal coat and a vest, et cetera. So you get to the top of the hill in your 2021 kit, but you throw on your 2020 um, thermal top mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. your uh, crystal, you know, okay. Okay, I agree. I, I believe there's some wiggle room with outerwear. I do agree. Well, but I, I, I will not say you can you cannot put on a blackout outerwear on top of a normal kit. No, not acceptable. I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, Stu, I, I wore the, the 2020 red top with the 2021 bibs looked the other great. day, and, and it looked, looked fine. Very good. I mean, I think no, it looked our, really I, good. I, I, everyone, sure. everyone listening to this, that was kind of our big, as, as Chip and I and Stu got together and did these kits was that was the main question we needed to answer was we need to make something or design something that people can still wear with some older with last year's stuff. So the tops, yes. you know, like I can wear an old top with a new bottom, right. Or a new top with maybe an old bottom. And that's, that was some of the design stuff or real direction we were trying to go to was to yes. make sure we incorporate that because we get it. It's expensive cost every year to try to, you know, new kits, things like that. People don't want to buy everything. So we had to right. make sure we could wear, you know, both years, if that makes sense. I agree. Yeah. But, uh, but you won't, you won't find me if anyone cares. I, I will. Right. If I'm going to wear 2020, I'm going to wear 2020. If I'm going to yep. wear 2021, I'm going to wear 2021. Like I, I have enough gear where it's like, okay, um, I can match these items. Um, but now, very serious. This is very serious. I have, at what point do you become um, concerned about ad additional items being different colors? Mm, big concern. So what I mean is over time, right? I arrive at the team and I've got, um, I, uh, oh, I just, I love these orange socks. They're oh, my favorite mm. orange socks. So it's like, oh, I get it. I get it. I, I, I understand that you've got these polka dot gloves mm -hmm. that are, oh, it's so cool. Ugh. I don't know. Yeah. I just, ugh. I think over time, ugh, you're just going to don't wear those blue shoes. Okay. It's just, yeah. Ah, ooh. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I'm a white on white guy. I like a white on white. Stu, you like your yellow shoes. Chip, you like the red on red. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. everyone kind of has their two cents, but. I mean, I also, I will add too, just to designing the 2021 kits was, you know, we tried to create a bib, meaning a kind of a black color so that we could, it could be kind of the main color in a sense. So there isn't really this mix and matching going on. Yeah. You're still going to have the stripes at the bottom that are different colors, but essentially the bottom bib is black. So you can right. wear it with a white, white, red, yellow, things like that. So there was more thought to that too, trying to make sure to, you know, alleviate this mixing and matching of kits. And, I, and I'm trying to be sensitive, like, cause I, under, I understand like, right. it is, it's expensive, but it's We're treading on thin ice here. It's, it's fun to talk about. I don't want anyone <laughs> to feel like upset or you got to wear a certain thing to ride with us, but there is a standard of, you know, the gear, what we look like, how it should be worn and maybe some mixing and matching idea. Okay. End Looking of soapbox. Yeah, Time, go. one thing though, Stu, about that, that we really try to do is we add enough accessories available at Pack and Pickup, take socks, for example, that are sold at cost so that things like that come easier. Mm -hmm. um, and our mm -hmm. kits are also, um, we do our best to supplement the cost in that from, through sponsors, et cetera, so that it is not like outrageous oh, yeah. relative to the industry. 
For right. sure. I mean, Vole, because we're one of their oldest clients, provides a 15% off retail, as well as the team sponsors, they pitch in another 5% off retail. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we use a lot of team money to outfit the group in right. good looking, high quality gear. I mean, it's, it's yeah. my hope that like, you won't feel bad buying two kits, outerwear, you know, really nice socks for five bucks. Like I just, uh, mm -hmm. anyway, I love gear. Mm -hmm. I told Brian mm -hmm. at Volet, I don't know if he understands how sacred cycle gear is. Oh, it's he, Christmas. he is such a cool dude. He is such a cool dude. <laughs> I mean, he, he is such a rad dude. And Volet is just, I, I will say, Volet is some seriously good material. I mean, they really yeah. make some really top quality cycling kits. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. They're up there well, for sure with like and the, 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 the world and things. The beauty of it is, is that this team provides a lot of feedback to them. And every year they listen and change and adjust and move things to make it better. So I 100% stand by all that gear that we have, you know, we, when Chip and I took over, it was a, it was a mm, six months chip where we were debating local. I mean, we, we, we had some real serious pressure about local um, shops, mm, like yeah. br local brands that the team mm -hmm. really wanted to switch to. And we just were like, not going to do it. We didn't do it. I'm glad we didn't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else? What I feel like we're kind of coming in for a landing here for kits. I don't want to beat it. I don't want to beat this too much. We do. We do. We do need to, uh, you know, next podcast, we're going to get into the details of what to order. Like, I mean, I'd love to hear, you know, what is, what is chip order and what does stew order? Ooh, I mean, that's, you ooh. know, I've had people just in recent days, just text me asking like, Hey, what should I get? You know, what let's style do it now. is good? Let's, let's, just do let's, it right now. let's do it right now. Okay. So you got to come up with your essential package. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm so ready. we talking Who's ready? winter gear. Are we talking summer gear. All I mean, I it, think all, let's, all, let's, all the above. let's hit, let's hit winter gear first. Let's hit because, yeah. you yeah. know, we, we ride, obviously it gets cold here. Right. Yeah. And yeah, we basically, I mean, I'll, I'll start with me. I guess I'll start. Okay. I, I, I wear a thermal top that thermal geothermal top mm -hmm. basically from now until june oh, so yeah. I, I will wear that with a base layer underneath thermal Essential. top and i will wear a Essential. wind vest or a wind jacket i never go thermal jacket or thermal vest that's just i just they're too heavy and bulky for me mm -hmm. and the I bottom agree. i usually go the the fs pro thermal bottoms or now with the label bibs i've been wearing lately you know those are warm enough for me with them leg warmers so yeah. um but typically for the top it's me it's just the geothermal top um, wind vest or a wind jacket, and I'm a size medium in both top and bottom. That's my winter setup. Oh yeah, nice. And I and I stay away from the team sponsored booties. I do not yes. believe that they are up to your quality. They uh, never zip up. Yeah, hopefully Volet will work on that. But uh, I I do stay away from thermal booties. No, no, yeah, the zipper has some serious issues there. But I agree mm -hmm. with Jake. Thermal coat, thermal vest. I mean, you have got to be really cold to put Ooh, those okay. on although chip does enjoy a thermal coat in his back pocket uh, does. for a, for a cold canyon descent yes yeah. uh i bag i swear <laughs> by you guys i hear me out uh i swear by the thermal coat and the new in the last two years they have made it just a little bit um less bulk it is a softer material same size so yes it does look like a sleeping bag in my back pocket but mm -hmm. there is nothing more cozy than that coming on a descent. Can I in... count? Can I can I counter though that the new, absolutely hundred percent windproof, waterproof crystal? Yes. I don't know exactly yes. how to. Also, I, I believe it provides so good. the protection that you need on a on a descent, similar to the thermal coat. So I yes. would put the crystal in a in a necessary uh, column. For Mill Creek yes. and Big Cod, hundred percent agree. Cold, hundred percent okay. agree. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, I my essentials uh, moving forward is for twenty twenty one essential. And you're talking long winter, winter. Uh, oh, okay, winter. Uh, I I I, I rarely will ever leave for a ride without a wind vest. I like I always have it. Either I have it yep. on, zipped from the bottom. Um, the other thing is, like Jake says, I I cannot own enough geothermal long sleeve jerseys mm -hmm, i mean yes. it's just like it's all i wear 
I we literally I wear multiple. them for like seven, eight months. Yeah, yep. that's all I wear. Um, I always wear the thermal bib. I love them. Uh, and the one thing that is different about this year's thermal bib is that the black label bib has the custom cuff, but it doesn't have the team logo on the butt. But the thermal bib has the custom cuff and Miduele is on the lower back butt area of the thermal bib. So that's mm. kind of a cool thing. Um, but I mean, I'll buy more thermal bibs than I do black label bibs. I just, that's I just same. wear, I wear them. I wore thermal yeah. bibs to Lodija. Yep. I mean, same. like, did you wear those in Lodija? Thermal yeah. bibs? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I will go on the record of saying I have never owned anything but thermal bibs and I wear them year round because when does Miduelli typically ride? I would not say that it is warmer than 50 degrees Every, most of our rides that we true. are in and the thermal gives a tighter fit. Mm -hmm. It lasts mm -hmm. longer if you're looking for that and it, it keeps you warm so I it's protective as well. It's pretty rare you'll put them on you'll, and you'll be like oh I'm, these are too right. hot. It yeah. Never, never okay. happened. Okay, right. let's go. Sub, let's go summer real quick, Jake. Essentials. Okay, essentials for summer. So I will typically that that velocity bib is good. They just came out with Belay came out with last year. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's great material. It's good. Um, however, I'm still biased to the black label. I think this the compression, mm -hmm. the fit is just all time. It's next level. Um, so top wise, I usually go either the velocity top. I made the mistake earlier on of purchasing the FS pro tops and they just, I just don't like the sleeve fit on me. That's just a personal preference, but uh, I, so I wear the velocity top for summer with a, with a, a sleeveless base layer underneath um, maybe some arm sleeves, by the way, the new arm sleeves are absolutely awesome. I mean, just design is great. Um, or uh, on really, really hot days as you're up in, you know, park city or just, you know, July summer, that velocity ascent jersey on top is just, is money so um but always i'm like Stu. always pack a wind vest i have that on my back almost every single ride just yeah. to provide some warmth and things like that so mm -hmm. okay i love uh i agree i love the velocity long sleeve i feel like the fs pro chip really loves it he's gonna come in strong for it but i feel like yeah. the sleeves are just a little too short on me uh but i also with the velocity jersey i feel like it's really stretchy so when I pack it on Great long su on long Saturday rides, I feel like I'm like a like a hobo with just yeah. bananas like that, bouncing around in my oh. back pocket. It's just the worst. Mm. So sometimes I will have an FS Pro for heavy pack long rides. Uh, I've really stopped using arm sleeves. They are beautiful, the new ones, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, I just I don't know. I, what I've really loved is the is the FS Pro long sleeve jersey mm -hmm. uh which i the think nova will be factor the, right? nova the nova fabric yeah i do believe it'll be replaced this year though by the velocity long sleeve which i love but yeah, that no has doubt. been that has been a crowd favorite of mine for the last couple of years and then i will exclusively wear black label bibs this summer it, it's one of the only reasons we made the change in the design was to get the team in these black label bibs they're so awesome they're incredible great yeah. diapers Yep. I agree Good with you. everything said. I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. add uh, even anything to it. Uh, would just second the long sleeve jerseys of such like choose anyone you want. They're better than the arm sleeves. Um, I like your, you they, do have a, you do have a few knickers though. Tell us about the knickers. I'm not, I'm never a knicker fan. I've never yeah, owned a knickers are awesome. I mean, there, there's, it's a hassle to go out to your garage and pull on a pair of knee warmers. I agree. Mm -hmm. When you just have nice fitting knickers, like um, yeah. I wear, I wear a taller sock as much as I can in the winter, and um, it's it's covering basically all skin, right? Chip, but, Chip will you will you <laughs> please talk, share? Us, I, when you're done with talking about your knickers will you please just give us just share some details about your skin suits please too as oh well. wait yeah. no jake you don't even know he's got a new one it's yeah. incredible <laughs> I, um the, he looks I mean, like spy he looks like spider-man yeah the, uh, I, I don't know if there's anything better i i wish i could just um 
show, I don't know if you can see, He's pro what, but wow, this is the skin suit. Um, he probably has those not tuning in on, oh on video. My. This is, this is absolutely incredible. Oh my yeah. gosh. You That's have got it. I, do I have that? Oh my gosh. That so, is amazing. So Chip, Chip, why, why is skin suit though? Tell me like what, like for those probably like racing or, yeah, you know, yeah. really, this is a serious question. I mean, what are the pros and cons? Okay. Well, this, this, uh, the last year's that I bought was specific to a long sleeve cross race kit. You guys know, I love the dirt. This season has been, um, I've either been in quarantine or a little bit sick and have not been able to race in the regular cross races, but this is what I would wear. The purpose of them is they, it's tighter, faster. There's only one pocket for like a 45 minute race. So it's not one that you want to wear like on a six hour like the ride. Belgian waffle, like the Belgian waffle or. Well, if you had a vest on over the top that you were going to carry your essentials in all good. Um, but then that defeats the purpose of it being so sleek and fast and warm. Um, it's, it's warm. It feels really good. And, um, really good for our rides where we generally are out for like two hours, it has enough space. So what size are you chip? Small, small, yeah. Medium. Steve, what husky. size do you wear in your, in your stuff? Yeah. Medium bottoms, small tops and everything. I'm 160 pounds, five foot 10. Okay. Okay. You guys, yeah. this has been good. We got, we're going to start losing listeners if we go any longer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dude, kids, I just, the kids are so good. Really. If any of you guys have questions, call, test text to you or chip or I, I mean, we, mm -hmm. we've gone through the mm -hmm. whole gamut. I mean, we, we know what things feel and fit and I mean, yeah. 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 And you can always come over to my house to try them on. Happy to share all my sizes because there's nothing worse than buying a club fit Nova with the extra baggy sleeves uh jason lang you know what happened so stay away from the peloton too stay away from oh no, no no peloton no yeah so no. don't make that mistake uh happy to share and help in any way with kits yeah even in these difficult corona times i will leave it on my porch and you can come try it on mm -hmm. so okay squadron right. uh next episode we are gonna do something so fun with some of these ogs these old uh yellow jersey wearers we're going to have them offer tips tricks maybe the top five or top three tips that they would give to any young cyclist or old cyclist we've got uh other episodes coming up where we want to talk about uh some specific guys on the team adventure rides you know chip uh loves you know tusher point to point uh we have guys that did belgian waffle uh lodija white rim all these awesome rides that we want to kind of dig into and, and talk about and, and uh, dissect so we have a lot of great ideas for coming up uh, for future episodes so hopefully uh we didn't turn you off you know hopefully we're catching some listeners <laughs> <laughs> who cares anyway <laughs> all right me dwellers all right we're out thanks for listening thanks everyone <laughs>